Welcome to Time Tunnel Radio. A Raleigh cigarette program starring Red Skelton with Ozzy Nelson and his music, Harriet Hilliard and Wonderful Smith. Skelton will be with you in just a moment, but first, a message from our sponsor. Smokers, in cigarettes, it's the tobacco blend that makes the big difference. That's why Raleigh cigarettes are so outstandingly better. Raleigh's give you a better blend, a golden rich tobacco blend. Everything is done to make Raleigh's exclusive blend absolutely perfect. The tobaccos are selected with exacting care and then slowly mellowed for rich, full flavor. And only the more expensive tobaccos are used. The golden tobaccos that experts will tell you are choicer. And not just one or two, but 31 different domestic and imported tobaccos are delicately blended by the world's most skilled tobacco blenders. Truly, Raleigh's Gold and Rich Blend is a masterpiece of tobacco blending. The world's finest blend. And remember, Raleigh's give you B&W coupons, too. Redeemable for your choice of over 70 magnificent premiums. Ladies and gentlemen, it pays to smoke Raleigh's, the pack with a coupon on the back, the cigarettes with the gold and rich tobacco blend, Raleigh's. <laughs> playing yours all for you. And here's something else all for you. Metro-Golden-Mayer's bright young comedian, the star of our show, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Truman, how would you like to come out to my housewarming? Oh, I'd love to, Red. I'll bring the matches. Okay. <laughs> Fine. One more joke like that, and next week this will be a <laughs> news broadcast again. <laughs> Say, Red, uh, where's your new house located? Well, I'll tell you. You go out Sunset Boulevard till you get to Sepulveda. Yeah. And there's a new district out there, uh-huh. see? Well, you get off of the bus, and you walk past three bad investments on the left, and I'm the third golden opportunity on the right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can find it. <laughs> How many rooms in your house? Well, there's five rooms. That's counting the bathrooms. The bathrooms don't count. Mr. Bradley, I was brought up different. <laughs> Say, would you like to see some pictures of my place? Oh, sure. Here, take a look at that. Say, swank and ultra-modern. Yeah, we've even got a sunken living room. (laughs) Is that the latest style? No, that's the latest earthquake. (laughs) Well, tell me something, Red. With the present-day shortage, uh, how were you able to get the building materials? Well, we weren't. You see, there's a lot of things still missing. Uh (laughs) For instance, the plumber couldn't get any brass, so there's no drain pipes under the sink. (laughs) What are you doing about it? Oh, nothing, really. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> now I can wash my hands and knees at the same time. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well, how are you, Harriet Hilliard? Say, uh, I was just talking about my house here. Oh, yeah, I know. I was out there today, and you wouldn't let me in. Oh, well, maybe I wasn't home. Oh, you were home all right. I saw your shirt hanging on the line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, say, uh, how'd you like my place, huh? Oh, swell. And I love that view of the mountain in the back. Well, that's not exactly a mountain, you see. I started to build a rock garden, but it got away from me. <laughs> I peeked into the window, Red, and say, I like the way you have your living room fixed. You do? Mm-hmm. Those two big chairs just match the pinball machine. Yeah. 
Swanko. Oh, how are you, Ozzy? Hello, everybody. Where's Fibber McGee and Molly? Well, I don't know. They're not in here. Why, well, Ozzy? Well, I thought I heard people laughing in here. <laughs> Another remark like that, and you'll be replaced by a famous three-piece orchestra. A three-piece orchestra? Yes, a friend of mine. A piano, a stool, and the guy sitting at it. <laughs> well, tell me, Red, what were you talking about? Well, I, I was talking about my new house, but I don't think we're going to have it very long. Oh, uh, why not? Some dope build the walls out of aluminum. <laughs> Say, I like your upstairs. Yeah, did you have fun riding the escalators? Oh, gee, have you got an escalator? Yeah, I made a deal with the May Company. You see, I sleep in their window and they sell hats in my bedroom. <laughs> Listen, before it slips my mind, Red, where did you get that novel wallpaper? Boy, <laughs> that sure is fancy looking. Well, you see, the paper hangers couldn't get wallpaper on account of the shortage, see? So instead they use rolls of piano music. Gee. <laughs> You know, I think it looks good. Yeah, it looks all right, but every time I sneeze, the walls play flamingo. (laughs) Comes now the spot in our program where uh, Harriet and Ozzy sing their special duet. Say, what have you got for us tonight, Ozzy? Well, Red, it's like this. Our song tonight is all about two folks who live next door. His salary gets less and less, and she spends more and more. The husband is, I must admit, a most unhappy gent. He may not be completely broke, but he sure is badly bent. Joke. She greets him every morning with the customary kiss, and then their conversation usually runs along like this. I'd love another sable coat, another Cadillac. Well, I'd love to have a half sole on my shoe. I'm really broke, and that's no joke. I'm breaking my back, putting up a front for you. Well, look at Mrs. Jones. She throws a party every night, entertains a hundred, maybe two. Yeah, but Mr. Jones just owns and owns while all I do is owe. Putting up a front for you. The boys down at the office no longer call me clerk. They call me something else that sounds the same. My face has grown so long from all the parties that we gave that the barber had to charge me a dollar for a shave. Well, if it would interest you, I know a safe that you could crack. Yeah, but the G-men will catch me if I do. Oh, well, I'll just be breaking rocks instead of my back, putting up a front for you. And that's what goes on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, she starts in with... I'd love a smart convertible, all done in tan and black. Well, I hope I have the rent when it comes due. Day by day I'm getting gray, breaking my back, putting up a front for you. Well, if you have, have, have liquid assets, you can easily get a loan. I heard that on the radio, I think. Yeah, well, the only thing that I know of that's liquid in our home is that leaky water pipe below the sink. <laughs> Now, you don't seem to realize that the wolf is at the door. You mean the great big hungry wolf? He don't mean your (laughs) brother-in-law. The bills I have to pay each month, why, they're bigger than my wages. Oh, I saw your checkbook yesterday. You have lots of empty pages. Well, when we're at those heavenly gates, if Mr. Jordan makes a crack about my looking older than you do... I'll say blame the wife, cause all my life I'm breaking my back, putting up a front for you. You think I'm kidding, putting up a front for you. That was Ozzy and Harriet singing, I'm breaking my back, putting up a front from you, uh, for you. (laughs) From the opera of the same name. 
Uh, now we have... Lady... Howdy, Mr. Skelton. Well, Wonderful Smith. Say, where have you been, Wonderful? I just come in from a tea dance at the Club Alabama. A tea dance? Yes, sir. Say, I'll bet you just go to those dances so you can hug and kiss the girls, don't you? I don't go there to make up mud pies. <laughs> Say, wonderful, you look kind of worried. Did you have an argument at the dance? Well, yes, I did. I stole Uncle Jim's gal. No kidding. And Uncle Jim says if he catches me, he's going to whittle me down. No kidding. Yeah, and the girl says if I don't go out with her, she's going to whittle me down. Say, you're in a fix. Yeah, I'm between the devil and the deep blue blade. (laughs) Say, you know, I I thought your girl was pretty nice, is she? Oh, she is a nice girl. She's an orphan. Oh, her folks were trampled to death by a runaway Lakonga line. <laughs> well, that's too bad. <clears throat> I'll take that. Hello. Oh, it's for you, wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, hello, Butterball. <laughs> yeah, this is the Mickey Rooney of Central Avenue. <laughs> The Mickey Rooney of Central Avenue? Uh, yes, sir. Technicolorly speaking. <laughs> what, what'd you say, honey? Why, honey, don't talk like that. You know I'm at the age where I pick things up. <laughs> say, listen, wonderful. If you want to make a hit with her, ask her to go to a movie. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Good. Uh, say, uh, honey, would you like to see Whistling in the Dark? <laughs> what'd you say? Yes, I know it does. <laughs> Look, uh, wonderful. If you want to talk to her, ask her to have dinner with you or something. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hello? Are you still there, Butterball? Well, look, uh, our little differences can be ironed out. Uh, would you like to have dinner with me tonight? You would? Well, tell the folks I'll be over early. <laughs> I wonder why she hang up like that. These things puzzle me. Yeah, you know what? You know why you have trouble with your girl? No. You don't know anything about romance. Well, do you, Mrs. Skelton? Do I? Did you ever hear tell Don one? Yes, sir. I mean, brother Don two. <laughs> I put that in for the corn lovers. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Skelton, yeah. every week you show us different type of people. Maybe you could show me some of those different types of fellas saying goodnight to the girls. Okay, wonderful. We'll do that. To start off with, we have a fellow saying goodnight to his girl who's very bashful. He's only known her for about three years. <laughs> well, here we are. <laughs> Got you home early, didn't I? <laughs> Did you like the show? Yeah. Gee, wasn't Gene Autry wonderful? Yeah. Did you see him? He killed 15 Indians with a hut set song. <laughs> yep, he shot him right between the Rolston and the Rilla Roll. <laughs> Gee, it was romantic. Yeah. Step a little closer, Ray. Well, I better not. I might touch you. Oh, come on. Be regular. Oh, no. Take your hand off my shoulder. Gee, you're bashful, aren't you? Yeah, I am bashful. I'm so bashful I have to have slacks on my lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got to go now. <laughs> but before I go, there's something I'd like to ask, if you don't mind. What? Well, it's nothing much. <laughs> oh, come on, ask me. <laughs> Gee, you have pretty teeth. Are they yours? I mean, uh... <laughs> Would you mind if I kissed you goodnight? Oh, I said it, I said it. <laughs> I didn't mean to. It just came right out, you know. <laughs> oh, of course not. Gee, I've wanted to do this for a long time. Look, I'll kiss you like the girls kiss the fellows in the movies. Oh, no, no, no. It probably tickles so much I couldn't stand it. <laughs> oh, don't be so silly. I'm going to kiss you so hard your shirt will roll up your back like a window blind. Oh. I don't believe you can. Puppy love. Two little kids saying goodnight to each other. They're on their way home from school. Harriet, uh, I'll be the little boy and you be the little girl. Okay, Red. 
Well, we had all more time. I didn't tire. Can't we sit down and rest? No. Only three more steps, then it's my turn to carry you. You know, I'm getting to like you. Yes? You sort of intoxicate me. Say, that's a good idea. What do you say? Let's get some soda pop and get stiff. First, give me a kiss. Nah. Oh, little one. Nah. Oh, it ain't nothing. No, oh, I'll wipe. How about that? You'd wait. It ain't nothing. <laughs> you want to hold my hand, Richard? Yeah, you got nice, soft hands. Just like chicken liver. <laughs> well, this is where. Yeah. I hope you won't wink at that little girl with the pigtails. Why? I don't like her. Her neck's dirty. Hmm? Her neck's dirty. Her dust? <laughs> then we have the college student saying goodnight to the girl. He's only known her for about ten minutes. They're just coming home from a jitterbug dance. <laughs> Did you have fun, slug? Hmm? Yeah, until you started to dance on the wall. Yeah. What do you say? Let's stop along here, huh? <laughs> Let's go back and try it again. <laughs> now we'll just park here, huh, stop? Well, good night. Wait a minute. What's your rush? I got to get up early and take my makeup off. Yeah. <laughs> ah, come on. Give us a kiss. What? I say, give us a kiss. Who's with you? I got to... <laughs> Come on, how about a smoogie? Ah, <laughs> oh, gee, you're handsome. Yeah? What big, strong padding you have in your suit. Yeah. Ah, come on, give me a kiss, huh? Aren't you going to tell me you love me? Hey, what's gotten into you? Come on, give me the kiss and cut out the commercials. <laughs> hey, I'll kiss you like they do in the movies. Come on, pin, pin back in my arms. Gee, ain't you skinny? <laughs> How come you always close your eyes when I get ready to kiss you? Did you ever look in a mirror? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you remind me of Casanova. He's dead. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I gotta go now. What do you want? One long kiss or 20 fast ones? Mm, I'll take the fast ones. Okay, brace yourself. <laughs> Gee. It's a little trick I learned while digging the 6th Avenue of Subway. <laughs> Good night, killer. Good night, squirt. When it hits you, yes indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, you shout when it hits you, yes indeed. Yes indeed. When the spirit moves you, you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. When it hits you, you'll holler, yes indeed. You will shout if it's in you, yes indeed. Bring on down, sister. Makes you shout, jacket sends you, yes indeed. Step in, Jackson. When that jive starts jumping, you'll shout, let me in there. When it hits you, you'll holler, yes, indeed. Oh, yes, indeed.
Sons by Ozzie Nelson and the boys, and very nice, too. Hey, Ozzie, take a look at this picture. Nice number, huh? Hey, that's class, Red. Streamlined and right up to the minute. Yeah, look at that face. Ain't she beautiful? Look at them pretty little hands. You know, Ozzie, she's going to be mine. Oh, well, congratulations. You know, I think I'll put her right in the kitchen and leave her there. You don't think she's going to give you any trouble, do you, Red? No, I'll just keep her well-oiled. Come on, come on, break it up, you guys. Always talking about dames. What do you mean, dames? We're talking about the swell electric clock I'm going to get with my Raleigh coupons. (laughs) (laughs) My apology, Red, my apology. I'm acquainted with that electric clock myself, and it's well worth raving about. And friends, that's only one of the many luxury premiums you can get with Raleigh coupons. There are over 70 more, each one really magnificent, something you'd be proud to own. And you get them just by smoking Raleigh's, the pack with the coupon on the back, and saving those valuable coupons. Now, we have a 60-page catalog picturing in full color all the Raleigh premiums, and it's free. For your copy, just drop a postal card to Raleigh in care of the station to which you are listening. And while you're out mailing that card, pick up a pack of Raleigh cigarettes. They're a smoother, milder, tastier cigarette because they give you a better tobacco blend, a gold and rich blend. You'll find, friends, it pays to smoke the pack with a coupon on the back Raleigh cigarettes. You know, Red, I was enjoying your teaching wonderful Smith how to court a young lady. Gosh, you must have been in love with a lot of girls to observe so much. No, I was only in love with one girl, but she jilted me. You know, I was so heartbroken that I went to Glendale to forget her. (laughs) Then I went to Huntington Park to forget Glendale. (laughs) But what I was getting at... Yesterday, you know, was Navy Day. Oh, yeah. So I thought you might know something about a sailor courting a girl. Yeah, say, that's a good idea. What do you say? Let's you and me be a couple of ordinary sailors just off a tramp steamer, and we're off to see our girls. (laughs) Why don't the rest of those guys pay their dues? (laughs) Well, here we are. Well, Red, after a year on a boat, here we are in California. Yeah, after a year on a boat, sure is good to be back on wetland again. (laughs) You know, I think this will be my last year on the scavenger boat. I'm getting tired of the same old crew. Yeah, me too. You know, they aren't very well-mannered either, are they? No, like last week when the boat started to sink, the captain yelled, Women and children first! Did you see how that crew fought to get them lifeboats? The captain almost tore my dress off of me. (laughs) What did you do to him? I bashed in his bustle. <laughs> Say, I hope this blind date you got for me is pretty. Where does she live? Uh, 333 3 Street. Well, let's take this cab, huh? Now, ah, let's walk. Ah, come on. Let's take a cab. Okay. Hey, driver, take us over to 3333 3 Street, huh? <laughs> well, here we are. Boy, that's the fastest I ever crossed the street. Well, here's where the girl lives. Oh, boy, a girl! Oh, boy. Say, do you think her folks will be there, or can I ad-lib? <laughs> you, know, you know, I think you're going to like this girl, Red. Gee, I hope she won't be like that last guy you got me. Boy, she was dumb. Oh, no, she wasn't. Oh, no. She was so dumb that on a quiz show, they wouldn't even let her sit in the audience. <laughs> now, there's one thing you've got to be very careful of with this girl who lives here. All right. She's a husband seeker. Yes? Now, look out. She don't trick you into marriage. No, I don't worry. Hey, what time you got? Uh, seven bells. Hmm, I'm a half a bell slow. <laughs> well, let's go in, huh? You go in, and I'll go down and get my girl. Okay. Hey, fix yourself up before you go in there. All right. Come on, comb that red hair of yours. All right. Boy, your hair ain't red. It's rusty. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later. Hey, Skelton. Yes? Who is it? It's me, your smarter spirit. I've got something to tell you. Well, go ahead and tell me. I will as soon as I find my place on this paper. Also, your dope spirit, too. Look, don't go in there. That 
woman has marriage on her mind. Is that all? Yes, that's all the kid can handle. <laughs> Go on, you dope. Press the doorbell. Okay. <laughs> Say, you know, I got a strange feeling. Something's trying to tell me that this girl wants to get married. Well, I'll go on in. Uh, is Harry at home? Uh-oh. Oh, uh, Miss Harriet! Uh, the new man is here. <laughs> I'll be right down. Hey, tell me, does little Audrey have many boyfriends? Well, the other night a fella came in, put his hands over her eyes, and said, Guess who? What happened? She called out the entire list of the local draft boards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, I think I better get out of here. Well, did you step in and let me close the door? All right. What was that? Time lock on the door. A time lock? Yeah. When does it open? June. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hello, Red. Oh, how are you? Uh, this is my father and mother. Which is which? <laughs> Howdy, sucker. I mean, hey, Mr. Skelton. Our daughter told me about you, the fortune you found on your last scavenger hunt. When do you expect to marry my daughter? Right after she goes through escrow. I mean... <laughs> Look, I don't want to marry her. What are your intentions? Now, wait a minute. Let's not get nosy, John. <laughs> My daughter says she found a half a million dollars. Yeah, but your daughter wouldn't want to marry me. I'm an old sea dog. I even got a wooden leg. Well, for half a million dollars, she'd marry a lumber pile. <laughs> after all, she is pretty. She takes after me. Well, what are you staring at? John, make him stop staring at my face. Why are you staring at my wife's face? Don't you like it? Yeah, but I bet you can't do it again. <laughs> and another thing, bub, why does your head come to a point? In my youth, I had a very unfortunate experience with a pencil sharpener. <laughs> well, Dad, let's get out of here and let these two love vultures alone. Yeah, let's. Let's go. Well, here we are, all alone. Just you and me and your father at the keyhole. You know, my mother was a debutante. Only 20 years since she came out. Uh, what from, an apple? <laughs> Gee, Red, isn't it quiet? Yes. Listen to the crickets. Did you know crickets could make music by rubbing their hind legs together? No kidding. Mm-hmm. Listen. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard it played on a broken leg. <laughs> oh, alone at last and with a sailor. Would you like something to drink? No, I can't handle it. Last time I had something to drink, something very funny happened. I kept sticking my head out the porthole. Well, what's funny about that? There was no porthole. <laughs> now, look, you know it's all you can do to keep from asking me. Asking you what? Me to marry you. Well, I will, and you can't back out. Now, wait a minute! <laughs> Gosh, I thought you'd never ask me. Yeah, but I put up a great fight, though, didn't I? <laughs> Harriet, dear, it's getting late. Don't you think you better go to bed? Yeah, you go to bed. I'm going to go to Hawaii. Well, if you're not going to marry me, this is goodbye. Yeah. Now that my daughter's gone upstairs to bed, tell me, why wouldn't you marry her? Her feet's too big. Her feet's too big. That's ridiculous. Well, she's upstairs getting ready for bed, isn't she? Yes. Well, listen. <laughs> Well, why doesn't she drop the other shoe? <laughs> How about that? One foot bigger than the other. Say, Red, how about a word and a pal? Wait a minute. You mean, how about a word from a pal? No, I mean a word and a pal, Red. Okay, who's the pal and where's the word? Well, he's from our companion sponsor and he's got the word. Yes, and a good word. You know, gentlemen... If you paid $100 a pound for a special pipe mixture, you couldn't get a finer quality tobacco than Sir Walter Raleigh. It's the quality pipe tobacco of America. And you'll fully realize that with your very first pipeful of Sir Walter Raleigh. It has a rich, full taste and flavor, a pleasing, fragrant aroma, and it burns just exactly right, extra cool, even, and slow. It's little wonder Sir Walter Raleigh is a big favorite in the Army and the Navy on American college campuses. In fact, everywhere you find men who know quality smoking. Gentlemen, you'll like Sir Walter Raleigh. Try a tin tonight. 
One week from tonight, same time, same Raleigh show and your same friends. Red Skelton, Ozzy Nelson and his music, Harriet Hilliard, Wonderful Smith and yours, Truman Bradley, will all be back. You got something to say, Red? Yes, thanks a lot for listening. Goodbye now. Red Skelton appears on this program through the courtesy of Mexico Golden Mayor. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.